Welcome to Lamb Chop Racing out on Zwift. We're on the New York course for the women's only race. We're out here for eight laps of the Guardia Loop out on New York. Going to be some fast and furious chop racing. Now, chop racing is all about handicap racing. That meaning that the subgroups A, B, C, and D set at different times. They get they go off at different times. The winner is the first rider across the line, though, regardless of the subgroup that you are seeing. Each one of them with their watts per kilograms and their time gaps on the screen right now. The Ds are out on course. This is a series that's in partnership with Black Sheep Cycling, a cycling apparel uh, brand that's out of Brisbane, Australia. My name is Nathan Guerra. I'm gonna be your commentator for the day for both the women's race as well as the men's race, or the open race, excuse me, that anybody can join. 7 p.m. GMT is the time that this race has just started. 7.45 p.m. GMT is the time that the open to everyone will be starting. So you can still jump on into the everyone race if you are looking forward to some handicap racing. Now, the as you can see here, the Ds are out on course here. It is all about the uh, team time trial situation. For, uh, essentially, uh, that the category is going to be doing up against the C category that is going to be chasing them down. You do see the time gap on the right hand side currently we'll have some time gaps for you here in just a little bit as the rest of the groups get out on course uh the c's are currently sitting in the pens with 217 to start for their race for this eight laps now 22.3 kilometers to go for the day here uh for this d category that we're looking at right now but it's a total 24 kilometers with a pretty solid time gap that's going to be shut down it's fairly flat there's just a little bump in the middle of the course each and every lap here, but fairly flat course. Uh, that little bump is going to be a place that some of these riders are really going to want to be holding some speed up and over the top. We'll have to wait and see how that ends up playing out between each of the categories. It is always uh, this chase that's pretty exciting between the D's and the C's. And then the A's and the B's, they tend to kind of be the categories that catch each other first. And uh, once they become this giant snowball that can try and chase down the rest of the categories, it tends to be very fast racing from there on out. So looking through some of the racers that are showing up on the day today, uh, we do have Team Revo, it looks like, in the A category with Kate Lane, as well as Tina Grobler. Uh, Team Fearless is out there as well uh, with Lois Brewer and Charlotte Backus there from Turbo as well as Livia Barrel coming from Team Turbo. So some pretty high-end racing uh, ladies out here in the A category. But there's only, from what I can see so far in the signups, I believe I saw five up front. So it'll be interesting to see if they can uh, really turn. Oh, we also have an, a late sign-up here coming from line here up Madsen from Team Turbo. Actually, very high-ranked rider with uh, currently 383 points on ZwiftPower.com. Uh, the lower the points, the higher the rank actually over on ZwiftPower.com. But um, three team turbos. They're going to essentially, it looks like, use this race out here as a uh, training session, it looks like, to uh, try and chase down categories that are up ahead. In the D category, it does look like we have uh, Alina Kashina, as well as Deborah Harris, Roxanne Timmis, as we did see just a moment ago. Uh, actually, at the front, riding for Cry Team Cryogen, has been hammered away. 2.4 watts per kilogram currently coming from uh, Roxanne Timmis. And then it's going to be Svelvia Roman. Uh, they're coming from the ZHU team. Then, uh, as well as Leah News and Chris Bagley, all riding in that D category. It does look like Bagley has fallen off the pace, though. And so it'll be this main group we're looking at here that's going to be making the ch uh, trying to make the chop win and hold off the rest of the categories. Now the C categories has gotten out on, has gotten out on course. Good to see uh, lots of Williams actually in the uh, C category here. Interesting to see all with the last name Revo. So uh, Jude Williams coming from Team Revo, Harla Williams coming from Team Revo. Linda Gray out there, the odd one out on the on the Williams there, as well as Natasha Williams as well coming from that uh, C category, also for Team Revo. And they, as they're just jumping out on course, they've got a good gap to close down here uh, still. Um, you know, they, and they started out with about, I believe it was four minutes or so, so very uh, big gap to close down, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how this ends up playing out 
with the uh, riders between this C category and this D category. Williams at the front, Natasha here, 3.0 watts per kilogram currently coming from her. Uh, it's going to be her teammate, um, Gray, actually. All into the back here, it looks like. Interesting to see. Westergaard there is also coming out of Norway. Uh, riding, it looks like, for an unattached, actually. Mandy McCoy's out there as well for Team TFC. We'll see if Mandy can hang on with the main group here. It looks like maybe uh, abandon this race here. So maybe we'll see Mandy in the next race here in the open category. But uh, all the Williams here hammer away as they are j taking this left-hand turn on to that section of the course that is the uh, little bump they'll hit every lap little five percent gradient not very long just about i believe it's about 100 meters or so uh but uh not too much climbing now they're going to be catching the d category once uh to begin with as the d category got enough of a head start to do a full lap it looks like uh, before they will need to be caught again so Natasha Williams with L. Gray here, Williams here now looking to take over at the front. 0.9 watts per kilogram right now coming from her. Uh, Jude Williams at the back now pulling through. Lots of power-ups being used. They're going to be using that probably every lap. They're using that for the power-ups as they come over that one climb. They'll have each lap four riders working at the front. One off the back here. It's going to be Eldred coming from Team Revo here as well. Sarah Eldred uh, coming on through though with that arrow power-up. So... Um, Williams and Aldred here really starting to push the pace here in the, in the C category. Uh, as well, we're going to keep, have to use each one of the, of the first names, actually, as there's three Williams coming from Revo here. So Natasha, Carla, and Jude all working together. That is Jude that we were just looking at just a moment uh, right, right here now. 3.3 watts per kilogram currently as uh, she pushes on through. They're going to catch the D category one time. They're going to have to do a full lap again, though and catch them once more. Now, uh, out on course though, we do uh, have the Ds and the Cs currently. And uh, the B category, they'll be starting in just a moment. Uh, and as they do get out on course, they're gonna have quite the gap to close down. It's already uh, pushing seven minutes up to the front runners actually that are in the D category. Currently, I'm looking at a gap of about four and a half I believe it is a minute from the C's to the, yep, there it is, 4.43 uh, on the bottom of your screen. You can watch the gaps at all times. Uh, between them, 6.44 back to the B category, and then the A category that has gotten out on course here now with the 7.51 closed down. So it looks like about eight minutes were given uh, to the A category to shut down. We are looking at Leah Brewer, Team Fearless, one of the strongest riders we know of. Uh, out on Zwift, very high ranked rider here working with the rest of Team Turbo they are going to be the main team in this A category to be watching out for and most likely working very well together, they may be in a Discord channel, there's been a lot, a lot of chatter actually on some of the uh, channels as we come into uh, the Zwift season there is the revelation from, uh, well the main Zwift season as we like to call it, you know, the highest numbers for the year. It is obviously we do have plenty of users that are year round, but um, the reality of this revelation that some people uh, in the gaming world, in the Zwift world, this uh, exercise world are communicating online uh, with live voice chat. And uh, a lot of these teams that do race at a higher esports level because they need so much communication to know who's gonna be doing what, when, and where, a lot of times we'll be hanging out in their own team discord which is a voice communication uh, software that you can have and so perhaps they're as they are time trialing away and it looks like they've organized this uh this team effort obviously with three of the riders from turbo being in there revo obviously as well fearless quite a few in here as well so most likely interacting in some sort of communication to let know who is going to pull through when is going to be borrowed there at the front though coming out of canada 4.2 watts per kilogram Coming from her. Now, if you're wondering, how are these categories uh, separated? Uh, the D category is going to be the lowest watts per kilogram that they can hold. The categories are based on watts per kilogram, and uh, it's going to be 2.5 or less for that D category for the ladies here. And then C category 2.5 to 3.2, and then B is 2.5 to 3.2, excuse me, 3.2 to 4.0, and then 4.0 or higher for the A's is usually where the categories are at. Um, at the front here, barrel here now, 4.7, as you can see, pushing over category limits. And uh, that is 
Now, the limits are what your FTP is, though. It is going to be a uh, functional threshold power for those of you who might be newer to the world of watts and cycling. Um, is essentially in the upper left-hand corner. You can see the watts at all times. That is the main power measurement that you do use in cycling. And that's how the world of Zwift was able to be a thing, really, as uh, that power measurement became more and more popular uh, into the 2000s and now, in, and now in obviously, uh, almost 2020 here now. It has uh, been used for the last five years in this program to power avatars forward because it is, can be measured in real life on bicycles. So power meters, smart trainers, however it might be communicated into the game right now. That's what's pushing these avatars forward. Real Watts from Leo Brewer that we're seeing right now and the rest of the riders that are around her all over the world here. Also on screen, you are seeing in the upper left-hand corner the current heart rate. And obviously, Brewer is hammering as she's up into 171. And that's usually, uh, you know, if you had averages across the board for where threshold is about Threshold effort being the, the the effort that you can hold for about one hour straight. 170s a lot of times. You know, some people beat up in the 190s. Some people 160s, depending. Very person. It's very personal to each every every individual. But if there was an average across all people, a lot of times right around 170 to 180 is going to be around threshold a lot of times. Uh, and uh, as you can see now, BRT Hellcats, though, hammering away here, coming out of Australia. But we did see Brewer just a moment ago, up in at 172, obviously working very hard right now. But uh, we do see Annabelle Cox here for the BRT Hellcats now, coming into the one climb that you have each lap with 16K to go, looking to shut down. Well, two minutes up to that C category, grabbing a couple of riders from that C category as they come over the top here that ha had fallen off the pace there. So um, S. Williams coming from Revo there, now making her way to the front. Lots of feather power-ups. They'll be able to grab those power-ups each time they come through the uh, sprint banner that is also going to be the finish banner for the riders out there today. You can see there's 15.6 kilometers to go for the D category up at the top there of your screen so that's how far the d category needs to travel yet to their finish uh and it looks like 3.7 in for the a category the b category 4.3 in so they got about a kilometer maybe a little less between them and those a's those a's are chasing them down so incredibly quickly i think the a category is not going to be catching this uh this b category fairly quickly out here today only 52 seconds and the a category is absolutely flying if i if we take a quick look over at where the A's are at at this point. They are actually uh, just climbing over the top of that climb. We saw this B category just go over, actually. They're about to head through the uh, sprint banner in just a moment here. And uh, with that, they will be catching a lot of speed, too. So now you do see it go back out, though, a little bit between the A's and the B's at, that, uh, at the bottom of your screen here. And that is because of the speed differences that are out on course uh, at any given time uh, it measures the distance and time but uh, as the B category sped up on that downhill and the A category slowed down on the uphill uh, the gap went out a little bit on the time there obviously but look at the top of the screen there each one of the categories see how much they have left for their category currently uh, as well as where they are out on course lead in the D's currently what we can see here uh, is, uh, well, we're currently looking at fourth place, actually, in the upper left-hand corner there. But in the C category, um, looks like they are shutting things down fairly quickly here. What I can see, it looks like about four minutes left, though, to go. So maybe the D category could hold on here. We are seeing within category limits, too, 2.6, 2.7-ish watts per kilogram. They've been out on course for about... 14 minutes or so so they uh they might be able to pull this one off here it's been a pretty big gap that they were given uh at the front end of this d category it is cute haro uh, coming out of japan and then it's going to be v speed here sitting on her wheel there at uh coming out of australia currently uh d harris also there as well so there's a lead group of three uh at the front end of this uh race here with this d category currently so uh, and uh, V Speed here out of Australia here trying to shut things down here. Um, and uh, it looks like in the B category, though, the largest category in the day here in this B category. Plenty 
of uh, plenty of riders in the Bs, but the C category completely getting blown apart here. Team Revo, as you can see here in the upper right-hand corner, with uh, and Williams, Natasha Williams, going off the front here, actually, not really caring too much to put give a wheel to the rest of the riders, saying, come on now, we need to shut this down. And I think there might be a little bit of worry in the uh you know in the riders here at this point as uh there is the reality that this um this d category has a solid gap still and is able to really holding on to it fairly well at this point still 33 kilometers between this d category and the c's now at this point it looks like between the a and the b and the c's though they're going to all get shut down pretty quickly and it's just going to be a chase up to that um up to those Ds with 13.4 uh, kilometers to go. They're about halfway through their race. Can be four laps to go. Once we do hit uh, the next climb for that D category, we do see the A's here on a little bit of attack, though. Back is here from Turbo, trying to maybe drop a few of these riders off. Interesting to see, as uh, this is a teammate, actually, of uh, Williams Lane there, as well as Barrow and Madsen. So Turbo, a little bit of infighting, perhaps. 6.33 is where they're at, back from the D category. But uh, the B's there, only 45 seconds up. These uh, A-category top riders are definitely looking to shut things down here. And it looks like they will be doing that fairly easily, actually, between uh, themselves and the um, and that B-category. The big question is, can they shut down all the time, all the way back to those, uh, all the way up to those Ds, actually? So they will, I believe, have to lap the D-category once. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that ends up playing out um, as uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how much motivation after they do after they catch them once uh, and then uh, looks to do so again now last week in the lamb chop series 27 kilometers three laps in the Innsbruck course last week and we did see the B category uh, take down the wind here Kim Schaff uh, was able to Right ahead, though, of a C category rider. Really came right down to the line. The B category was a little ways back uh, from the uh, from that group. So, uh, But uh, B category last week. We'll see if they can pull that off again. Going to be a big ask, I think, though, uh, with how quickly these A's are bringing things back. And that may be why, um, you know, the A category has been caught out each week so far. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, that is why. You know, and how this ends up playing out, because I think that has a little bit to do with why we are seeing uh, the time gaps difference here. And, uh, you know, the kind of pace that this A category has been hammering along at. If we take a look here real quickly, I mean, these B category riders here at this point, um, steady 3.4 watts per kilogram, Animal Cox, BRT, BRT Hellcats here on the front. Late there as well, coming from the KRT team. Also a rider who's been racing a lot. Good to see her out there, saw her in the broadcast uh, yesterday the Hino Cup as well, so uh, good to see uh, her jumping into another race here. And uh, a lot of these racers here in this uh, A category here, jumping into a lot of the higher end esports races actually. And as uh, we're looking through here, Lisa Jane late now, uh, yesterday, I believe it was, yeah, DBR Hino Cup in the Everyone, 14th place, solid result there coming from her. Uh, level 41 Zwifter with 356 races, actually. So, uh, very strong rider out there. And um, it does also look like we do have his, uh, Annabelle Cox out there as well. Watching out for her for a solid result as uh, she's riding for one of the stronger teams. And she's really kind of taking on a lead a little bit amongst uh, these riders. She gives a lot of encouragement in the... Uh, category, letting everybody know how to ride, and uh, definitely take some leadership with the watch that she throws into the pedals. Looks like uh, Annabelle not only is doing the lamb chop almost every week from what I can see, but also is taking on the Tour of London that is currently uh, happening. She did stage one and stage two, it looks like. So uh, back on the ninth, took a win actually in the E2 category, and then took a win in the uh, E category yesterday on Tour of London Stage 2. So good to see that she's uh, looking to complete, it looks like, each one of those stages. Um, now back in, though, with the front end of this race, and that is going to be the Ds here. Uh, solo rider, perhaps, here? No, Bagley here now? I'm, I'm trying to see. It looks like, actually, 
Uh, v Speed Bagley and D Harris are off the front a little bit. It is a 112 gap back to Roman here that we're looking at here. The, the front end of this race, though, has already gone through, uh, I believe, the uh, sprint banner a moment ago here. Now, Bagley's actually sitting, it looks like, in seventh place. So, interesting to see a little bit of a change up here. So, Bagley actually about to be lapped. And it's V Speed along with Taro and Harris. Those are the three uh, leaders in the D category. There we go. And we're back up with them here. They're 12.6 kilometers in. They've over halfway through their race. They're into their about three and a half laps to go uh, as they head up these little undulations. Here will be left-hand turn in just a moment and back on over toward the sprint banner in just a moment here. Working very well together, though, these three riders here. The rider out of Japan there, Taro, riding for uh, Team Imu going to be D. Harris. They're sitting in second place and then 2.4 watts are coming from B. Speed. So uh, looking through the current situation out here uh, in this race here and uh, in the D category, V. Speed hammering away right now and uh, at the front 3.2 it's 167 beats per minute here currently. So we'll see if she can hold on to uh, this uh, kind of pace though as uh, now now a lot of times you'll get a little bit of pushback uh, on You know, oh the over category limits what's going on here, but no When you are in a time trial situation the idea is that you do need to go over your uh, Functional threshold power you need to go over the category limits when you're at the front But then you sit in and it averages out as you sit in bring back those wattages. The idea is to get as much speed as you possibly can. So to get as much speed as you possibly can, you need to be going over those category limits at the front. As you can see here, uh, as V-Speed pushes over that 2.5 into 3.6, but the riders that are sitting in, they grab the wheel here and they bring it back to 2.7, 2.5, 2.8, you can see there from Taro there, within those category limits. Now V-Speed backing off, gonna, gonna take her spot in the pack as somebody pulls through and keeps that speed as high as they possibly can. Still 338 though, is the gap here between these riders as they head into lap uh, five here in just a minute. And uh, it'll be three laps to go at that point uh, with about eight kilometers or so. And as they head over these little bit of cobbies, there'll be a couple little undulations here for this D category. And then a left-hand turn into the main climb. Uh, back in with the bees, though, this is the largest group that we do have. 16 riders have shown up on the day, and perhaps the favorites because of the amount of riders that they do have. But it's still three kilometers to close down, 438. The gap on the time has not been coming down very quickly, and perhaps that is because of the reality of how flat the course is. With so many riders, though, in this group, they've got a lot of firepower to work with. Anybody who's been sitting in at this point really needs to start pulling the, some of the weight here because there's reality that they are halfway through their race after this, uh, these next couple of turns, and it's going to be a very uh, difficult D here, day here for the, um, for the B category all around if they do not start stepping things up. Looking at the average watts per kilogram, too, with this B category at this point. Annabelle Cox up with 3.7 watts per kilogram. So pretty solid here, uh, but it looks like it's fair. Actually, the B category putting out almost uh, the highest watts per kilogram on the day amongst all the riders. Uh, in the A category, though, it does look like it is uh, Olivia Barrow there at 4.2. Charlotte Back is there 4.5 watts per kilogram on average. So really the brunt of the work being done by Team Turbo, it looks like, to try and bring things back now. One second gap here coming in between Barrow and Williams from Team Revo. Brewer there from Team Fearless trying to get back on terms. It looks like with so little riders in this group, as we are seeing um, four, it looks like, trying to work together, maybe even five now, as Bacchus gets back on terms. But it's almost like a chop from the get-go. You know, if you can't hang on, the speed's got to stay high, and without a lot of matches to work with here, everybody's got to put everything on the table. There is no, not really going to be any chance to, for any kind of reprieve. This has got to be one of the best workouts you could possibly get. 179 beats per minute currently coming from Williams here from Revo, so really putting out some effort here. This is no walk in the park. It's a ride in the park, but it just doesn't feel like it whatsoever with the kind of heart rates we're seeing. 400 watts here as they come over this little 7% gradient. They got this kick every lap here. 4.59, it's about 40 seconds up, as you can see there, uh, between them and the B category. 
459 up to the front of the race. They haven't quite brought back half of the time just yet, though, as I believe it was about eight minutes at the start here. So got a lot of work to do and some speed to pick up here if they're going to be bringing back that D or even C category as they are over halfway through this race here. But the B category there, they are just around the corner. There's a downhill that the A's just went through for that sprint. There's a left-hand turn right after that, and that's right where this B category is at this point. Then there's another left-hand turn. It's essentially 180 degrees that they do to go back uh, to, I believe it's going to be, I want to say, east, uh, if we were in New York, actual inside of New York. Um, and uh, as they do head along this long straightaway here, uh, they will be out of sight for the A's for a little while here. But uh, as the A category brings it back to 40 seconds about at this point, they're about to take the same left-hand bend and then the 180 degree uh, back toward the west. It, this uh, little bit of a downhill as they pick up some speed. It is only half a kilometer between these two categories. So a chop will be happening here pretty quickly. We'll have a much larger blob to work with here with 16 plus 7. So we're looking at... Um, a solid contingent of riders. There were 23 that would be up in it. Well, plus seven if we had the whole of the A category, but there's actually five in there. So we'll be looking at about 21 riders, though, all working together. And with the category averages being so on par with each other, with the A's and the B's here, I have a feeling they're all going to work together fairly well. And it's not going to just be this quick snap uh, that we have seen a lot of times, mainly because of the rolling nature of this course i think a lot of riders are going to be able to hang on in this b category and the uh a's are going to be waiting maybe more for a sprint and using the reality of how large this pack is to chase down those c's that are only about 40 seconds up actually from this b category so interesting to see just a little ways ahead and not many riders actually compared to those b's to try and stay away at this point as we're seeing only two riders working together at this point it's going to be natasha williams it looks like along with Carla Williams, both from Team Revo, working together. They're 17 seconds up from Heli Lorila at this point. Uh, and uh, it looks like these two riders have a serious job ahead of them at this point. Three watts per kilogram on the front here, coming from Natasha Williams in this C category, well over category limits right now, pushing on this uphill. And uh, this section, every time you come through little cobbles that the bees just went through, you know that the sprint uh, banner is only a few hundred meters away, about uh, about 500 meters away or so. So with this C category, solo rider now, it looks like almost, no, it's going to be, excuse me, uh, it looks like Carla Williams coming through with that feather power up, trying to keep the speed as high as they possibly can. You can see this is when things start to get exciting because the riders are start looking behind and say, okay, we got to hang on. They might even be thinking about trying to uh, wait up though and say, okay, well, if we keep on pushing too hard right now, perhaps we'll get dropped the second the bees come on. So if it gets to that point where you start thinking it's all said and done, there's no way I can hang on any longer, they may back off a little bit, just try and keep their speed up and reserve a little bit of energy to go in for hopes of a sprint finish up against the B category. You did just see them use that arrow power up though through the downhill, picked up a whole lot of speed now, about 0.3 kilometers out from this B category that's chasing very, very, very fast at this point. Now the A's though, where are they at? Are they about to start their climb? And yes, they're about to start their climb as well. There's the left-hand turn. They just took it. It is six, 7% gradient. The B's just coming over the other side of this now at this point. About, uh, it's still out to 45 seconds though. Interesting to see. I think that's because the B category just went downhill though. We'll see how fast the A's come up over the top and come through that sprint section because they're almost within sight. Now the C's here, as you can see, just a little ways up. They're actually on the same exact bend here at this point that this B category is on. About to make a catch, it looks like here, for the B category, for a few of the stragglers are in the C's, it looks like here. Now the left-hand turn, here it is, C category. Full left-hand turn, 1% uphill gradient. Now B category still a little bit of a downhill. There's a little bit of a gap to catch one or two, I think, C's that have fallen off pace. It is still about 30 seconds or so. So these C's that they are catching, or D's that they're catching up, up ahead, not a part of the actual lead, the groups that are up ahead. It's still just the two that are the Revo 
Revo Girls here, Natasha Williams, Cookie Monsters in, I'm loving the name here, in the uh, ZwiftPower.com results actually. Uh, Natasha Williams riding for Revo Cookie Monsters instead of having a spirit. So on ZwiftPower.com a lot of riders will put a spirit animal or a little emoji for the, uh, the, what they identify with for their motivation to uh, go beast mode out on course, but it looks like it's gonna be nothing but Cookie Monsters uh, making Natasha go go out here. So hammered away, and uh, Carla here is right along with her as they look to hold off this B category, but it is maybe not enough here. Two laps to go in a moment here. Two laps to go in a moment. It's about two and a half at, at this point. And the D category still with 245. It may come right down to it, though. Interesting to see, you know, the D category with two laps to go. The D category just starting their two laps to go at this point. Do they still need to be caught, though, one more time? is the question with the kilometer and a half out here. As I'm seeing V speed, they were caught by these bees here at this point with three minutes back though, 16.9. So I have a feeling that uh, this D category has a little bit of advantage at this point, hanging on to the wheel of the bees that are ahead. The bees need to drop. They need to give a surge at this point to get rid of these Ds that are using the back end of this because there's a full lap that still needs to be done to catch this D category officially for the um, for the lead to be taken over here because they have a whole lap ahead here. Now the bees have been able to drop them off. They picked up the speed here a little bit, 6.4 kilometers to go. Still a full lap though to make the catch as you can see. Back in with the C category, just leaving the section that we're seeing here as they head downhill with the bees. The C's also just about on that same downhill. It's about 10 seconds up. They are going to be caught on this uphill section unless they have some sort of crazy reserves of energy that they've been saving up just for this moment here. But here come the B category. can come rolling right on through as they start their two laps to go, going into lap number six. MJ here out of Denmark now making their way to the front now. Looks like Williams now as well, uh, making her way to front. Also for Team Revo, chasing down her teammates to uh, shut down that gap here. It does look like one last effort here from Natasha Williams with that feather power up, looking to try and hold off the category as they chase them down, but it's going to be too little, too late, it looks like. The B category comes rolling over the top. There's gonna be a snowball speed, and the C category will officially be caught in just a moment here as uh, it looks like Carla Williams falling off pace. Natasha trying to put in one last effort here, actually, as she rolls on through. But here comes the bees now, same exact section. They're going to pick up a few more power lips and most likely use them. And uh, you can see just off in the distance there, the one last holdout coming from Natasha Williams with the Cookie Monsters. A couple extra chocolate chip here, it looks like, to try and make something happen, but... It uh, doesn't look like it's going to be working out here. Time to uh, maybe load up on some cookies and milk to make it to the line here uh, in a sprint, perhaps, as uh, the pack could still be used by Natasha. And if she does have a good sprint, we did see her uh, hammer away over the top of that climb there with a feather power up. But up in a 187 beat sprint, she might want to back off just a little bit. Keep her speed, but... Don't back off completely, but uh, now she, she ramps up here. Did you see this pack's come flying up on her? 4.7 watts picking up quickly here, as we see from Natasha, looking to hang on. This is a rider we're going to want to follow through uh, the rest of the race here, along with a few of the other C category riders that are still hanging tough here amongst this group. Now, interesting to see Heli Loria, uh, it looks like, was able to grab some advantage, actually. Uh, she fell off pace from the two Revo riders. But uh, she, because she backed off a little bit, she was able to um, grab onto the back end of this B category and get a free ride, actually, all the way to this uh, section here. So interesting to see. This is uh, this rider here riding for Finnish Zwift riders, actually, out of Finland, um, is uh, doing really well to reserve her energy and maybe even a tactical move here from Heli Lorila in that C category as she uh, was able to grab onto the wheels there and perhaps reserve a lot of energy 
for a sprint finish. Now, the B category in C's, all together, as you can see, at the bottom of the uh, screen at this point, 19.6 in. They've got two and 10 seconds to close down to the front end of this race here with that D category. Now, the A's are coming on like a freight train, though. They're just coming on through these little bit of climbs here in just a moment here. It is only 50 seconds back, actually, but they have so little riders in comparison to this group that has swelled now with what looks to be, I believe, about 20 plus riders now with the, most of the C category, B categories in there still as well. And they've got all the motivation in the world here to hold off this A category. And that's only going to excel them forward to try and bring it back those Ds as well. But the Ds starting their last lap here, just heading into it here in a moment as they head into lap uh, seven and eight here in just a second now. And uh, up and over this little bit of a climb, it'll be a left-hand turn in just a moment here. And uh, with one point, oh, actually, they're about to finish up their last lap, actually. They're coming into their finish here, excuse me, as they hammer away here. They actually have a breakaway just ahead of me here. This is the chop actually happening within this category itself. So uh, it looks like we may actually have uh, a breakaway situation here 24 kilometers in total and d harris it looks like d it looks like the d category has going to make this happen here 775 766 meters left here d harris now 10 seconds up from this rider here could be winning it outright she starts to really turn the screws over q taro here coming from japan these two riders taking the win outright here and great job to the d category i'm not sure that this is uh happened in any of the lamb chop actually in the past few weeks here so this is a huge result actually for this d category as they make their way to the line here so looking through for the uh, other results that we have seen for the d for the categories b category we saw in the third week as we can see we're looking uh, back on the 20 um, back on the 28th as well looking through and it looks like uh, C category, so th not too many situations where we've actually had uh, the D category able to walk away with it. And uh, from what I can see here, mainly Bs and Cs actually able to make this happen. So D Harris here, as well as Q Taro here. A little bit of a kick here now coming on through. Oh, we're back in with Roman here, back in fourth place actually. So I'm not sure if these riders are over category limits, perhaps. My productions are moving their way back, but I believe this is going to be the sprint to the line, and I believe it was Taro. Harris with the faster time, I think, across the line with the sprint, but I think Taro might have nipped it as far as the actual first one across the line for this D category, actually. So uh, solid, solid sprint there coming on through for uh, D. Harris has set things up almost perfectly. Uh, with the timing there, but I think Taro was able to just barely hold it off. I'm going to take a quick look at the live results here that I do have over on ZwiftPower.com as well as we do wait for the official results to come up on uh, screen here in just a moment. Um, it looks like we're back in with the C category here as they are making their way around course here now and uh, as they do it looks like the c category here is uh still lap to go or so uh i believe 1.6 of the 1.6 kilometers so one one lap to go here for these c still um and a little bit of a kick here coming from williams now four watts per kilogram here coming from her as uh we're gonna have to take a look and see where things are at with these results here in just a moment uh, we could be able to see a couple cool sprints, though, in just a second, though, as well, as riders do make their way to the finish line within their categories. Always fun to see uh, how things play out between them. But uh, from what I can see here in the results, uh, maybe they're all completely filtered, so we're going to stick with uh, the... Um, we are waiting for the results to come on through on ZooPower.com. They're not coming through just as of yet, but we will be jumping in with the open category uh rate uh rate open race for the categories here in just a moment in the lamb chop uh the d's in the open race 422 to the start of that as the c category in the women's only race are looking to finish up their race here in just a moment 
um, as we look to get the results up here for all of you in just a second as uh, I believe they're still filtering out over on ZwiftPower.com. But uh, four minutes to start, 21 riders over on Watopia right now for the D category. We'll be out on the Tempest Fugit here in just a moment. 634 meters though to go for the C category with these riders as we're with it looks like uh, Williams here as well as Soldano. But up ahead is the front end of this C category. Uh, and this is what we were talking about in the C category. Is this going to be a situation where uh, the finish rider, Lorilla, uh, or Lor yeah, Lorilla is going to be able to pull something pretty amazing off here. Doesn't look like it's going to be happening though as the B category uh, seems to be the ones that are going to try and pull something off here. We're seeing nine, eight watts per kilogram from MJ. MJ has taken wins outright over and over again, actually. And MJ at 9.8 watts per kilogram, coming on through three seconds up from this ride right here. And I believe it is going to be MJ in the B category. First one across the line in the Bs. She actually has taken a couple of win in wins in the uh, chop the past couple of weeks, actually. I'm looking back on the 28th of November, actually, was MJ on that day as well. It did win outright just ahead of Louis Furzon and Jessica Hamilton. So back in with the A category, though, as you can see, it's going to be borrowed from Team Turbo. 11 watts per kilogram. They were unable to shut, it, shut down the gap, but Turbo is still out on course, showing why they are one of the strongest teams out there and it will be borrow coming across the line first amazing team time trial there for those riders and uh, an amazing workout and that's really what it's all about here in chop racing is the workouts really it's that's what uh you know it, it's about winning obviously amongst your category but uh when it comes down to it there's also the reality that um the it's a community race you can um hammered away you know hammered away out there amongst the community and with all of the different categories able to get an amazing workout working with that category that is a, with riders that are about the same level of fitness that you have uh, and because of that it turns into an amazing team time trial uh, out on course and uh, everybody pushed to their absolute limits because you're on the front killing it at your about about above or at what you can handle for about one hour and so uh, we are out on Watopia, though. Next, uh, we are going to be doing the open race here. Uh, we just got done with the ladies only race, but uh, we are leaving the New York course and heading on over to Watopia with uh, one minute to go to the start of this D category. So load up Watopia. And uh, if you're just tuning in, welcome to Lamb Chop Racing out on Zwift. We are doing two laps of the Tempest Fugit. It is a very flat course out here today for Lamb Chop Racing. There are the categories for the Chop Race. Each one of the categories can win. First rider across the line, regardless of the category. Uh, there will be time gaps, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there, with 5, 8, and 11, respectively, between the CB and and A categories all the way up to the D category. D category will head off first with an average watts per kilogram assumed of the riders in that category, 1.0 to 2.4. Just tuning in, my name's Nathan Garrett. I'm your commentator for the open race, and it looks like we've got 38 racers in the D category, 34 in the C category, currently in the pens, 14 in the A's, and a lot of times some of the fastest riders that we have out on Zwift do sh show up to try and chase down those other categories. And that's what's cool about racing in the chop racing out on Zwift is the fact that you are able to battle it out with all levels of riders and get an amazing, amazing workout here. Looking through to see what the past results have been in this series actually over the last couple of weeks actually and uh last week we saw a crazy battle actually with the c category actually able to take down uh the win uh last week it was a uh, great battle that, uh with gary cordry coming from the pack followed up by thomas Reinke and then robert graham uh, last week in the chop racing. Now we're jumping on into the D category. We'll see if they can hold off the C's this week. C's with the win last week 
on December 5th. Again, uh, you can still jump in if you're R, A, C, or um, if you're a C, a B, or A rider. A little bit of time. This will be our fifth race in the series. Race number six will be on December 19th next week. Uh, we are currently doing the European race times for our broadcasts. 7.45 p.m. GMT is the start that the D's just went off at. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with what this is all about, handicap racing, A, B, and C's and D's all start at a different time. Winners first across, first across the line, regardless of the group. Again, this is in partnership with Black Sheep Cycling, uh, which is Black Sheep, which is a cycling apparel brand based out of brisbane australia we started these broadcasts actually uh with chop racing with the southern hemisphere we've been doing them for a couple of years on zwift community live and it's been so incredibly successful we just, uh, zwift decided to have a european race north america's race during our winter here in the northern hemisphere we also have chop racing during their winter in the southern southern hemisphere with some series as well if you're loving the kids that are in game make sure to jump into your category in order to get one and unlock it. Uh, the A's will be in white, the B's in blue, the C's are in black, and as you can see, the D's are in salmon out on course here. As Hudson, 1.8 watts per kilogram, looks to try and chase down his category, it looks like, out there. Uh, as it looks like the, we're looking at the A's now at this point as they wait in their pens here. The A category currently does have 20 riders that have jumped into there. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of chatter in there as well. Plenty of chatter actually coming from the A's and the B's. Everybody kind of talking about how they're, what they're going to do to chase down the rest of the categories out there. If um, Also, if you're unfamiliar with everything that's happening out on screen here with Zwift, always up in the upper left-hand corner to be able to see the wattages we, uh, as well as the heart rates and the RPMs of the riders. Where the riders are from in the world are going to be on the right-hand side of the screen as well. Uh, a lot of times, these races are really just about sharpening fitness and working on that top-end threshold work. Uh, it's really about having fun and getting a boost in fitness. Also, though, there's just a, there's the individual that can win that you can win against some of the fastest racers out there in the D category, C category, B category. That's the cool thing about shop racing. Everybody's got a chance to be at the front end and uh, get some awesome camera time here, obviously, on the broadcast. Groups really need to work together to be successful. You know, in the uh, Southern Hemisphere broadcast, a lot of times we had ride leaders. Uh, when uh, we've it's very organized with the Australian uh, or the Southern Hemisphere Chop Racing, where we've had a lot of ride leaders come forward that actually end up giving instructions throughout the entirety of the race. Um, and so pretty cool to see that and how organized that they are. They've been doing it for quite a while and have some very com committed leaders out there. It'd be cool to see that coming down the road here as well for the European and the American uh, events as well. Now, if you're in the North Americas, you're like, look, I can't ride at this time. 7 p.m. GMT, Lamb Chop for uh, excuse me, excuse me, 7 p.m. EDT, Eastern Time for Americas, for the women only event, and then 7.45 EDT for the open to everyone event. Because if you're like, look, it's 2 p.m. in uh, North America at work or wherever it may be, want to get into some chop racing, we will not be broadcasting it, but uh, the Americas race will be happening uh, here tonight at uh, 7 and 7.45 p.m. We're waiting for a few more of the categories to get on course. It looks like we've lost a little bit of the D feed out there. Uh, one more shout out too as well, for as, for as far as broadcasts go, we've got a new broadcast over on Zwift Community Live. You can check out as we sit here and wait. A couple of things that we can do as far as housekeeping and stuff going. We are partnering with KOA Sports actually to do their Warrior Race. Uh, that'll be going on at 5 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. I believe that is going to be 11 p.m. GMT if you're hanging out over in the uh, European areas. Uh, this looks like we do have the C category jumping out on course, though, as they look to chase down the Ds. The Ds do have 33.5 left to go on the day here. And uh, as the things do load up for the chase of the Cs, there they are. Out on course now. So it does look like we got some gameplay here. And it's going to be Medford here coming out of Great Britain, hammering away in the C category. 74 riders signed up in the C category. That is going to be their strength on the day here because the numbers, uh, in the strength in numbers is definitely a thing in Zwift racing. The more that you have, the more that you can get a snowball effect. But they got to work together. And Medford already falling off pace a little bit. Now 
will this rider be able to jump back on? You know, there is a reality that if he can't hang on at a certain pace, maybe there the rest of the pack says, look, here's the speed that we need to go. And they just drop you off right from the get-go. But with 74 riders and a couple extra matches to burn maybe later, allowing everybody to kind of warm up might be in their favor, actually, here. So now we do see Dare Bikes here. Dern, it looks like here, rider out of Norway, hammering away as uh, they make their way through this section of the course. Absolutely flying, actually. We said it was very, very flat. And uh, as you can see, this is not going to have very much up and down at all. There's actually just some very, very false flats. 2%, I think, maybe maybe 3 at one point. But really, it's 2 maybe 3% at the most that you have out on course here. And with such a flat course, the speeds are going to be extremely high. It is 11-minute gap, though, back to the A category. We're looking at 37 kilometers. Uh, in total. Should be a fairly fast race out here today. Uh, again, 11 minutes back to the A category. I believe it was going to be 8 minutes, I believe it was, to the B category. So it be interesting to see if they can hold off the uh, reality of the hard charging uh, A category. I think the B category has 70 plus riders in it or so. So a huge contingent of riders that have shown up on the day here in this B category now. So uh, as we do head through, though, the C category here, 75, as you can see here, toward the front, it's going to be Cordry. That's actually going to be the winner, I believe it was, of the race last week. Gary Cordry here, uh, hammering away. And uh, really, maybe some motivation in the legs there for Cordry after taking that win down last week. We do see Jamie Blitz from NTR out there, I believe, as well. He was able to take a sixth place in the sprint. Uh, in that C category, Ingo Schorgenhammer last week, Rick Hinson, Robert Graham, a lot of the same names out there. Robert Graham taking over toward the front there for Team VS uh, out on course. And he took third place last week, uh, one second back from Thomas and Gary Cordry. So interesting to see uh, a lot of these racers, it looks like, really enjoying their time out on course here and uh, able to show up week in, week out. Riding for Team uh, Vila Sports Riders, that's what Team uh TVS uh, is standing for. Now we're back in with the B category. They're just getting out on course here, as you can see. Looks like 61 riders showing up. Pretty good comparison as far as the numbers go between them and that C category. It does look like it's going to be Guthrie riding for CLS, making his way to the front at this point. We're going to have to see if uh, they get any riders dropping off right from the get-go as uh, they make their way around to day here. So back in with the live results right now, though, uh, from what we can see, A category still sitting in uh, the pens now at this point. It looks like they're up to almost 50 riders. A lot of times the A category does not have that many riders. This is going to be... An absolute hammer fest. Actually, I'm I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen here. With 150 to go in the pens here at this point, with 49 riders in that A category, and some of the fastest that we've seen out on Zwift, Sammy Legvox, Mike Schwartz coming from Team Dropouts. We're seeing uh, some of the dirt boys out here as well with Nick Glassnap and Tim E. Ryan Giliano is out there. Um, Hammering away, it looks like, from Team Draft. Not quite out on course, obviously, but Andrew Hansen, Brian Hodges from Team Evoke. Uh, Callis is out there in full force with the jerk stats. Oftendahl is out there, as well as Tom Kaland, Fagley. So uh, we're seeing James Hodges, Brandon Meltintello. So these, you know, they got a very big gap uh, to work with, obviously, the uh, D category, um, as well as the C category. Uh, but with... That gap, they're really gonna have to uh, work with uh, work with each other very well because the speeds that we are about to see coming out of this uh, coming out coming out of this A category, I think, are going to be 50 kilometer per hour plus, probably up into 60s at times, and uh, they are going to be an absolute freight freight train. Toward the front end of this group, though, 22nd place currently coming from the rider out of Norway for Dare Bikes here. We're going to see uh, what kind of averages that they're throwing down so far. Who's put out the brunt of the work 
currently in this C category. The D category are looking at, it seems to be about 416 still between themselves and that C category. And of course, Ben Boswell looks like leading things out for the Cs currently. Uh, D category with Jen, uh, Jens Willems coming out of Belgium, riding for the BZR cycling team with T-Flash as well, coming from that T category. They've completed 6.7 kilometers so far. Uh, and everybody well within category limits. Shout out to the racers out there. Everybody jumping into the right categories and really uh, showing that they're um, doing the right thing as far as that goes. It's always good to see everybody jumping into the right places as far as their uh, abilities levels go. Now, James Hodges, KRT, as you can see, making his way to the front of the pack, 13th place currently. And this is going to be a group you cannot mess around with, that is for sure. The Rio from the Finnish uh, team that uh, was was also a rider, actually. Good to see them jumping in here a little bit more. Not a team I'm super familiar with, FCR, but good to see that FCR showing up on uh, each one of these races here and starting to really um, be a presence out there for Finland, actually. But it's going to be L'Oreal here. Was taken over at the front for a moment. We saw some... Big kicks there at the front end of this group here. 6.3 watts per carry coming from K Hacker. K Ward there coming out. Kyle Ward, good to see him jumping on. Of course, a rider that we've seen time and again in Chop Racing in the Southern Hemisphere as well. So it's also going to be Revel there as far as Ray Legvox there toward the front. 6 watts per kilogram on the front. That's what they're going to be pulling all day long, I think, here now. So currently 30 miles per hour over 50 kilometers per hour now, right now, as they look to shut down the categories up ahead. 36 kilometers to finish there for the A category. Currently for the B category, we're looking at 33.6 at this point, uh, 12 minutes into the race. They're still on the first lap of two now. Now we're back in with the Cs here at this point. It does look like we're going to try and get eyes on the Ds here in a little bit. Uh, I am seeing an interesting thing in this D category, actually. Um, I did just see C. Taylor. Um, jumping into this uh, this race here, coming out of New Zealand. So it looks like uh, Taylor hammering away now, uh, riding at 3.0 watts per kilogram in that D category. We'll see if we can jump back in with them out on the uh, feed here in just a moment. But um, from what I can see, D category currently 8.3 kilometers in to their race here now. They are just about to head into um, the main town here out on Tempest Fugit, actually. So we'll see uh, if they can hold on to this gap that they have formed, actually. There's one rider off the front. It's going to be Belmont uh, riding for out of Peru. Uh, but uh, Belmont on the Z power and uh, off the front over category limits here. So most likely uh, we'll have a relegation and needs to jump into uh, the C category or even, uh, yeah, C category with the kind of Watts McKillian that be held on the front there from Belmont. But Belmont, nice job. Get an upgrade, as uh, we used to do with the meme. You get an upgrade, you get an upgrade. Everybody gets an upgrade. Not to, but it's a lot of times when uh, you do find yourself in a racing situation, maybe for the first time out on Zwift, um, a lot of times it's a good way to see where you might end up amongst the riders. And uh, a lot of times people jump in for the first time, like, all right, where do I sit? And uh, maybe the reality of the riders that are around you pushing you beyond what you thought you could possibly handle, a lot of times will end up in upgrades for your categories. And, um, you know, as long as you first time, second time that happens, okay, whoa, I need to be into another category. No big deal, especially amongst the community races like this. Uh, but at the front end of the A category, these... The limits are endless as it's 4.0 plus and it's going to be Kaylin, L'Oreal as well, Ward out at the front again. They're pushing 30 to 35 miles per hour, pushing 55 to 60 kilometers per hour at the front end of this race here in the A category right now. The C's now, as you can see, excuse me, the B's actually going through the oasis here at this point through the waterfalls. A little bit of a power up at the front there, bringing that speed up. This is the one place on the course. You get a 2% little uphill grain, a little bit of a false flat here. You can gain some time. That's why that feather power up is most likely being used at the front. Another feather power up coming through from the rider there on the left-hand side that's going to be locking riding four. R2 out of Germany here. BZR there with Montoya now as well. Rider coming out of the US of A, it looks like here with Angler. 
riding for CLS here now. So this is the current situation with the B category out on course, back in with the Cs as they are outside of the Oasis now and uh, heading toward that D category with a whole lot of speed. Looking at the live tracker here, it does look like... D category have not gotten too far away, actually, from the Cs. This is getting shut down pretty quickly. As we look at the four-way here now, this, uh, you know, with the kind of gaps that were allowed, we can see why the times were so incredibly huge with 11, all the way out to uh, 11 uh, minutes for that A category. We have an estimated time of arrival here of 56.46 there for the riders in that D category. Uh, now in the C category, 56.30. The B category, 56.11. The A category, they're looking at an arrival time estimated of 55.47 here. So um, now these are these are estimated times. They're, they most likely not will not be the finish times. These are coming from ZipPower.com, but it gives you an idea of about where the riders may end up and what kind of effort needs to be thrown down out on course to try and hold off the rest of the packs out there. It's got a nice little tool that the packs can use to know whether or not they're putting the work in and whether or not they need to push a little bit harder. Out on course, actually. So, as we can see, A category, I think, favored out here today with the kind of firepower that they've shown up. And I think that goes to show the quality that we have of the riders out here. And when this many A category riders show up on a flatter course like this, it can be extremely difficult to hold them off here. So, we are seeing the distances here between the groups right now, as well as the time gaps here. Lead group. 10.8 kilometers in for that D category. It's going to be Keach here, uh, I believe, in that D category. That is at the front now at this point. Uh, a category, 920 back, 5 kilometers in. Got a lot of distance to close up, but it's a very flat course. So they head through this little oasis area here now. And that, that little flat, uh, false flat section, 2% uphill gradient. You can see the current gradient on the upper right-hand part of your screen. 2% uphill now. They're going to be feeling that if they're on a smart trainer. And uh, definitely want to be the point that you want, the only point, really, that you could really use that feather power up to do anything really with it out on course. It does look like we do have our D category. We haven't jumped in with them in quite a bit, so let's go ahead and see how they're doing. D category here, we are seeing Carly Taylor here hammering away. 2.9 watts per kilogram. It looks like 3 watts per kilogram uh, with that big Z next to her name when her... When her um, uh, little name tag will pop up. So good to see her jumping in here with this category and giving a little bit of leadership, it looks like, amongst them. Uh, at the front end of this pack, though, it is going to be A. Keish along with I. Jones, Johansson from the DBR team, all hammered away, 11.8 kilometers in, 41 kilometers per hour. Pretty big difference here between this category and the A. Let's take a quick look at the speed differences. As we look, go through, 41 kilometers per hour currently coming through um, on my feed here. In the C category, I do believe it's going to be 47 kilometers per hour, so quite a bit more speed here. And that's what's going to really matter. It's, it is about the watts per kilogram, but at the end of the day, it's about working well together to produce as much speed as you possibly can um, against the other riders here. Jumping in with the Bs now, I do believe they're hammering away at almost 50 kilometers per hour coming from them, uh, but not quite the kind of speeds that we're seeing out of this A category. A category absolutely flying. Almost 60 kilometers per hour they're coming from them. As uh, looking toward the back though, a lot of times in these, a lot of times in these longer races here, uh, or in in these uh, really fast races here, riders will start start to struggle just to hang on, even on the flatter sections of the course. And already we have W Cannon here. Um, 4.1 watts per kilogram. I'm looking to try and grab back on terms. Falling off the back here. It looks like actually amongst this A category, we've already lost 11 riders. As we do have Mike Schwartz from the dropouts at the back end of the pack right now. Hodges, though, one of the uh, riders that really knows how to make a sacrifice, that is going to the front and doing just that, pushing 5.5 watts per kilogram. The speeds did come down for just a moment, and so it looks like he was not very happy with that. Looks to start to push the pace. Kaland here from Team Callis, now the new esports team out on Zwift. Callis actually was work, uh, a part of a lot of the riders. Actually, I believe all of the riders on Team Callis were a part of the KISS racing team, which uh, the uh, James Hodges 
is a part of who was just working on the front of the pack there. So they're going to know each other, they're going to know how to work well together, actually. And the time gap's just flying down here. 8.24 in the last minute, minute and a half or so. They've brought back almost that much time. The 20 minutes into this race, 29.1 kilometers to go. It's a two-lap race here out on the Tempix Fugit. And 37 kilometers that they're going to be completing in total. And they are absolutely flying looking through for the categories here they will see each other momentarily actually out on course the d category just came through the turnaround here and the city out on the course they do not have many riders though to work with here as there's been a pretty big break early on in this d category and that might work against them but he's just saying look we got to just hammer away 3.3 on the front here. Sit on my wheel. I am going to make this happen. Now in the C category, though, as they push along here, 46 kilometers per hour. Currently, we are seeing it looks still a solid contingent of riders able to hang in amongst them. Charlie Ryan from NTR. They've, I know that NTR is out there with a good, solid contingent of riders in this uh, group out here, well-known riders actually in the C category that trying to show up to a lot of the esports broadcasts actually. So good to see NTR jumping out there. It's going to be Edmondson though on the back here. Cassidy falling off. So in this category here, 4.2 watts per kilogram on the back from Cassidy, but he's falling off pace here. 46 riders out of 75 still making this C category as they leave the um, leave the city here and head on forward toward. Uh, their second lap in just a moment. It will be Charlie Ryan from NTR on the front. Does like look like Jern Dare bikes there looking to take over there as well. 232 watts at the front there. As they push 3.8 plus. Almost up in the 4 watts but going to the front, but that is what they need to do. They need to really sacrifice themselves at the front end of this race to make this happen. Now, the B and the C category, they have been the favorite categories so far in these races actually so uh but they may have the work cut out for them there's a little bit more distance to work with here a lot of speed to work with and from what i can see here this a category is really using these flat sections and as they had come on through this uh next section out on course here it's interesting to see how incredibly fast that they are flying here at this point in the A category, 5.5, 5.1 watts per kilogram here, currently coming from this A category here. They are, you know, 8 watts per kilogram now as they come through the city here. Ha K Hacker now pushing toward the front there with, it looks like 6.7 watts per kilogram coming from him. So interesting to see the A category really flying along. Now we're back in, with, now we're in with the C's though still as uh, we're looking through 23.9. Kilometers to go. They've completed, it looks like, 12.8, so not quite the halfway point here. As they're going to be looking at uh, almost 20 kilometers for their halfway point. And uh, with three minutes up to the D category, it looks like they may be able to make this happen here. B category, 5.11 back, 7.40 back for the A's right now. So solid efforts here still coming from all of the riders now. So, um, and uh, as we do see, it looks like uh, the C category still hammering away, 176 now. As uh, maybe we'll see if we can get a swap up as they do catch a few of the straggling Ds as we come on through and uh, D category now. Uh, Keach here now still on the front. It will be Cordova now with Nielsen and Simpson all working well together here. Keats just been setting the steady pace here on the front. Perhaps a little bit over category limit over there for the um, 3.2 watts per kilogram. Aaron Keach, though, good to see him out there on course. Putting in a solid effort there out of the US of A as this has been the rider doing really the brunt of the work here in this category. Level 14 Zwifter. Um, out on Zwift here. First race, it looks like, though. So not seeing any races for Aaron Keish out on Z uh, ZwiftPower.com. So perhaps jumping into his first race and figuring out where he sits amongst the riders. And that's always a good way. You know, racing is a great way, as we did say, to figure out where you do stand amongst the uh the racers here and uh he'll be getting that upgrade most likely as he's uh 3.3 and we're over 20 minutes in so solid efforts here coming from the rest of the d categories can be hanging on it looks like now that's going to put a little bit more fire underneath the categories behind but 
I think the reality is is that with less riders uh, in this main pack for the Ds, it's going to be uh, pretty difficult for that uh, that group to hang uh, hang on to that gap that they've formed here over the hard chasing 40 plus riders that are left in this C category. So even though they do have a uh, little extra firepower on the front there, they are still at a pretty good disadvantage with the number of riders that are chasing in the Bs in the C category here. So B category, um, solid efforts here. Big shout out to the workhorses with Rick Hinson uh, pushing a solid 3.4 watts per kilogram. We're seeing as well as Ben Boswell throwing out a solid effort there, 3.1 there. Uh, shout out to him. It looks like Jamie Blythe from NTR also up into 3.1 watts per kilogram though. So solid efforts there, especially NTR working very well together. Charlie Ryan on the front end there. It looks like 3.2 watts per kilogram. So uh, really putting in their efforts here. It looks like this category is actually working really well together though, uh, as it isn't the same rider at the front over and over again. And that's really what you got to do. Push out up in that four watts per kilogram. Every time I'm looking at the front, I'm seeing Charlie Ryan right now pushing five watts per kilogram even. Cordry, last week's winner, uh, Gary Cordry from Strava Art, pushing 3.1 toward the front. They're all really putting in their effort and making sure that they always kind of have this flying V at the front. And that's how you know you're doing it right. Now, if they were to get a situation where it's completely strung out into a straight line, it might be a little much at that point. And uh, so it looks like Ryan here doing it right as uh, Pell comes on through. Pell's comes on through with that arrow power up, bringing that speed up to 43 kilometers per hour now. Jamie Blythe, NTR, now taking over toward the front in the C category. Back in with the Bs now. They are only... About two minutes back here at this point. So shutting down pretty quickly this gap. We're not even into the second lap either. So interesting to see how quickly this is coming back here. And this D and C category are really going to have to start ramping things up. And the C category is we do see them start to push into that four, five watts per kilogram on the front. This is when things start. I mean, this is pretty early, but already we're starting to see a little bit of uh, worry perhaps in the legs here and the efforts are starting to come through and they're going to have to start thinking about having this second lap be way faster than their first lap as they're pushing 44 kilometers per hour because the reality is is that this A category is doing almost a full 15 to 20 kilometers per hour faster consistently here out on course as off the doll pushes at the front this pace i'm looking at off the doll at the front here just pushed in six watts per kilogram 6.5 watts per kilogram. revel now 6.2 kaylin from callus as they come back through the a's the 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 oasis here area k hacker from cryogen now it looks like 4.5 revel still pulling through up and out of the saddle over and over again Kalen now, these avatars at the front end of this A category just continue to stand up and push almost sprint-type numbers to, con to continue on with this in incessant pace that they're setting. And uh, it's been an amazing job here so far by this A category uh, to shut down such a huge amount of time. 11 minutes is what they started with, and they've already got it down to 6.29. They're only 14.3 kilometers into a 37-kilometer race here, so a lot of landscape to work with yet. They're not quite at that halfway point here. They've still got about a minute to bring back here, but they will most likely be under half the distance and half the time here, or excuse me, half the time in Less than half the distance, actually. So I think the A category, the first week we've seen, I believe, in this CHOP series so far, in this in the five in the four races we've seen, this is race number five here for these broadcasts. And I have a feeling that this may be the one for the A category. I'm look back through some of the results here, make sure I got that correctly. But I believe this is going to be one of the first time we're able to see the A category in this series actually take down the win here. So uh, A category really hammering away. And it's the numbers, I think, as well this week. A lot of times we've seen maybe not quite as many numbers in this A category, uh, but with quite a few more showing up on the day here, making it a little bit easier for them. Back in with the C, the X, let's go back in with the Ds, actually, as they still have keys here on the front here. Steady here, 148 beats per minute. There's the C category making the chase. The C category just came by that D category just a moment ago. They're about to catch a few of the stragglers from the D category that fell off 
just about uh, you know uh, uh, you know almost at the beginning of the race actually because the kind of pace that was being set at the front end of those D's here. But uh, as you do see, C is about to catch up some of these D's. Some of these D's may be able to jump in with them as they come on through, and as they do, uh, perhaps there will be um, a few of the riders that can hang on and uh, make a. Make a nice sprint at the finish, perhaps, but they're going to maybe add a little bit more speed, too. That, I mean, there's quite a few D category riders that are being caught there, you can, as you can see. So it'll be interesting to see how that ends up playing out because uh, the riders there in this D category, that's going to really surge some things here. That's almost 15 riders or so, so that's going to bring it back up to the 60s, I believe, or so of, of riders that are uh, making this happen. Now, last week, again, we said this is the category that won. C category, able to take down the win um, last week in the uh, race number three uh, for the results. It was uh, the A category that actually was able to bring, uh, I believe, take it down actually out on the volcano flat for two laps. So uh, A category two weeks ago, Vidar Mail for Team Callis. Uh, ESRT actually so a mistake by me saying that they weren't able to make it happen seems like the flatter course is perhaps the ones that do favor them as um, that was also a flatter course out on the volcano flat nothing like uh, an Innsbruck ring or anything like that so interesting to see that the A category seems to do a little bit better where the speeds can be as high as possible now the C is just passing that B category, there's the turnaround. It's only two minutes up here at this point as they go flying by. They're going to go uh, left-hand side here of the big rock here in a second and then do a full 180 and be chasing down onto their second lap. We are seeing a couple of these power-ups being popped as they're about to grab a couple of more going through the lap finish banner in just a moment, or lap finish overpass in just a moment here. Uh, looking through for the past results, then it looks like a couple of weeks back in race number two, uh, we were out on the Greater London Flat and was the B category. So we've got a C, a B, and an A category win, um, as well as in the first week, we did see the B category as well. So B's with two, C's with one, and the A's with one as well. Into number five, it looks like perhaps the A category are going to be able to pull off a second win and tie with the B category out there today. Let's start hearing your predictions uh, for the results in the categories. Maybe not for, I, I, let, let's leave alone, uh, you know, who within, what specific rider within each category. We'll try, we'll try and get into that with chat and uh, everybody watching over on Facebook and the other feeds, um, you know, as we get closer to whether or not the chop is going to be happening for each one of the categories there. But which category do you think is going to take it down? I am of the opinion that the A category has got this today. They were able to bring back more than half the time in less than half the distance here. Uh, I believe this B category, though, with the kind of pace that we're seeing with the Cs and the Bs here, steady here, 43 kilometers per hour here coming from the Cs. I think the Cs have the kind of firepower that... This B and C category get together, they're going to have probably over 100 riders at that point. And with that many riders, they're going to have quite a bit more firepower if some of these C category riders got a little bit of something to hang in there, push something at the front here, here and there. They could get a little bit more of a small snowball effect. So we'll have to wait and see. I am seeing some of your chat coming through over on Facebook. Um, we'll see if I can uh, bring in, uh, see some of the chat over on YouTube as well. Larry Parker thinks that A's are going to catch and get the win. And I'm going to have to agree with you as far as my predictions go out here today at five minutes. You know, A category just coming through the halfway point. They have brought back six minutes in less than half the race. So, you know, they were out there at 11 minutes here. Look at this, 4.59. It's going to be very difficult here, but the C's and the B's, I think, getting together, that's going to be their, be their, their best bet. I mean, the C's do not want that, obviously, but we've seen some pretty awesome sprints, actually. And if we look at past results, you know, the C's winning outright last week, but we also do see some mixture with Gary Cordry, actually, last week's winner. Um, back on uh, the 21st of November, he was actually in uh, fifth place overall with the B category winning. So 
be watching out for that. You know, you could still see a sprint situation here and the C category, they need to keep their speed as high as possible. Don't, you know, give up the ghost yet. Don't throw in the towel. But there is a reality that once they, if they do get caught, there is a, uh, there is a surge that they can have if they work well together with the rest of the B category, actually. And so here's that B category only a little ways up. Looks like about a minute and a half from them to those A's. This is the C category as they're looking to chase down two minutes. Now, the gap out from the C's to the B's is actually uh, more than any of the of the other categories at this point. So the D category are kind of the favorites of our course right now as they head uh, through here. They still got plenty of racing to go, 12 kilometers to the finish line at this point, but 35 minutes in lap two of two out here, out on the Tempest View, got very flat course out here as they head into the Oasis section here in just a moment, and uh, gonna get a little bit of a downhill through here as Keish takes over toward the front. Gonna be Nielsen now out of Norway. Keish has been just hammering on the front to here. Uh, gonna be getting that upgrade into that B category most likely as uh, the kind of paces that he's been putting out right now. Good to see all of the viewers over on YouTube. Plenty of viewers over on YouTube today, so good to see everybody. You got any questions as uh, things are a little bit calmer here at this point before we do make some of the chop, uh, make the chop happen between the categories and see who's going to take a win. Let me know who you think is going to win. We'll, we'll shout you out out there. Let me know who your favorite racers are as well out on course as I am watching the YouTube and the Facebook chat as well. Chris Amin is out there saying, I'll call a B. But A is flying today. Good to see Chris and Min hanging out as well. Tim Searle says the B's catch C's first. It'll be even tougher for the A's. Still wouldn't put it past them. So, yeah, and Tim, you know, this is Tim Searle actually, and that is actually a guy that you want to listen to. Big shout out to Tim Searle from AHDR. I think number one in all Zwift mileage um, and experience out on Zwift. Uh, good to see the world leader as well as organizer of a lot of the chop racing puts in a huge effort to uh, figure out these time gaps weekend uh, and it has been a huge part of this this week or excuse me this year for the southern hemisphere as well in partnership with hdr uh with chop racing so it was good to see uh good to see him in the chat uh today here so uh now though d categories we can see 155 they're holding steady here interesting to see c category now only a minute between them, a little over a minute here between them and those Bs at 305 and 155 respectively. A's though, absolutely flying. And they're bringing the time back way faster than we're seeing now at this point between the B and the C category. And I think the A's, they may catch that B category before the C's. And then at that point, I think really the race is up to the D's to hold off. Because if that A category catches the Bs, there's going to be such a huge speed swell and they are going to snowball their way through the second half of this course. But they're starting to run out of landscape, though. 14.5 kilometers to go. We're looking at the B category here, 13.7. C category, 12.9. As you can see, the differences here, still some pretty good distances now between them. D category, only 10.4 to go. I mean, look at the rest of the categories. So as we, as we cycle through there, in the D category, 10.3. Look at the difference here, though. C category, almost a full three kilometers there. The difference, not much in, in, in distance here, but, I mean, the distance differences with how much to go there. I mean, the D category, they've got almost a full kilometer, three kilometer, four kilometer, five kilometer difference here between them. This is, uh, this is a pretty big gap they still have to work with here. This D category, they could make it happen here, but 10 kilometers, I mean, look, at it's 10 kilometers to go at this point. 144, they have to hold on for 10 kilometers to the finish line. 144 between them and the C's. Four minutes here at this point between them and the A's. This is going to get really exciting in a moment here. It's really coming right down to it. James Elsie saying that the A's are going to do it. Good to hear you there, James. And we'll have to see... It's, I mean, and here they are, the A category still pushing along. We're looking at 34th place here. At the front, though, there is some absolute firepower. G Foley for Team Ireland. K Hacker still for Team Cryogen pulling on through. We've got four riders at the front really putting in their efforts here. They're well into almost 60 kilometers per hour here as they pass up Carly Taylor uh, coming out of Australia. They're good to see her. Hammered away, ex-professional racer. 
now working for Zwift and hammering away a little bit out for the D category, giving some leadership out there. She sat, looks like she was sitting in and getting a little bit of a, a recovery ride in. But now Hacker here, Kaylin, Revel, far up there from the Vikings team. Bergen coming from the Vikings team now, making the way to the front. But it is strung out at the front end of this race here. Up and out of the cell, G Foley continues to push this pace on. A lot of riders just sitting in, trying to sit in, but the pace is getting so high in this A category that sitting in is starting to not become an option. And we're starting to get some snappage here in this A category. Some of these riders sitting toward the back might get caught out a little bit here. We'll have to wait and see, but 340 now back from this A category up to the Ds. And this is one of the best, it looks like, best chops we've seen so far because I really think it's going to come right down to the line between each one of the categories. Not just one or two of the categories battling out to the line. It looks like this is almost going to be a situation where they all kind of come to this perfect storm of a sprint when it does come down to it here. 8.7 to go, 136 between the Cs and the Ds. And the, actually, the Cs not closing down too much of the speed now at this point. They've got to really push this pace. Jamie Blythe making his way to the front now. Charlie Ryan as well. NTR really doing their work. They're kind of getting into their own little team time trial mode here between each other. Now it's going to be one cog to the front. Kof is there as well. Gordry, Lat Cordry, excuse me, Cordry from Stravart now making his way to the front as they head through the city here now in just a moment, right now. And it's going to now be Mar Mazzocchi now coming out of. Italy was taken over to the front as he came through on the left-hand side. Jern, we've been watching the whole time here from Dare Bikes now. 3.4 watts per kilogram coming from him. 10.5 kilometers to go. Think about when, when we said 10 kilometers to go for that D category. That was quite a while ago. This D category, they've got the ability. They just get a hold on eight more kilometers at this point. 41 minutes of racing. Can they hold on, though, to the kind of pace that they're pushing? All the way through C category, about to do the turn around here and have nothing but the last section, of course, back on over through toward the arch that they finish at here. So in the B category, though, as you can see, they're heading through the section we just saw. The C category come through. Now we're really getting into the official chop type situations here. It's only 40 seconds up, but they can see the city in the distance here. Where the B category is going on through right now. C category just doing the turnaround. They're about to see each other out on course for the second time here. But this is going to be the time that you do not want to see them. Because it's going to be so incredibly close to their heels at this point. It's within a minute between them now. C's and B's on course. It's well within the minute of the A's now. As a few of the C categories start to get caught here out on course. James Hodges making his way to the front. KRT now. K far up there. It looks like Vikings now toward the front. Still doing some work now. Foley though. All day long in the front. They, they just saw the D category go by. The A category. There it was. The turnaround is about to happen here for this A category. They're starting to see each other. They're starting to see the rabbit, the carrot, the chase out there. The rabbits here that are the A category here. Bergen, 6.1 watts per kilogram on the front for the Vikings team now. Bergen still hammer away 400 watts. If you want to be on the front end of this race right now, it's 400 watts plus 6 watts per kilogram coming from Foyley now. K far up now, pushing along 30 miles per hour. We're seeing almost 60 kilometers per hour right now coming from these riders here. C category just saw the A category by. They're already through the turnaround here at this point. 118 up. 118 is what the D category have to hold on to. Seven kilometers to go for the D category out here. Absolutely flying right now. And Casey Shum, I see him. <laughs> There's still eight minutes to go. Time to break the legs. It absolutely is. There's a lot. This is essentially a 10 minute everything you got to the line now. If you want to win for your category, they are flying out here. Smith, I see you out there over on YouTube saying the A's are jamming now and they most definitely are. I'm looking through here now and they are really getting motivated. It's all the sacrifice that you can have. Again, Foley on the front, 413 watts watts right now. 5.3 watts per kilogram. K Hackett from Cryogen coming on through, putting in an effort now. Now I'm seeing Doving here now. He called it Team Experimental with Casey Shum says, it's time to break the legs, go to the front. And that's what Doving does in this A category. 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram. He's breaking the rest of the category. Kaylin, who's put in so much work so far, looks to jump onto the wheel now at this point. At 
the front end of the A's right now. They are flying with nine point nine kilometers to go. 362 watts just to sit in at the front end of this of uh, at, at the back end of this category here right now 22nd place and Hodges such a smart rider one of the most experienced riders hundreds and hundreds I think he's got 500 plus maybe even more races under his belt out here and he knows it is not a moment you want to be sitting at the back because this is about to snap here off the dial toward the front 3.6 Foley again Hacker now 10.7 400 watts coming from K Hacker now Porter James is there as well making his way to front for CCR now Bergen from the Vikings now taking over A category is nothing but a train at this point and they are flying 25th place here currently from Guthrie now 8.8 point one kilometers to go here's the difference between them where's the dinosaur off in the distance there, 0.2 kilometers is all it is, is the difference here. We just saw the B category go on by the dinosaur here. That's going to be our marker. And there it is. That's the difference. They almost got them within sight at this point. Once that caught is made, I think there's going to be a huge surge of motivation here for these riders. One minute and six seconds between the C category and this D category at this point. Here's the Cs. They've caught some Ds at this point. They've, they're getting a little bit of a of swell from the group here at this point from a few extra riders, but they've really got to push the pace to hold off the hard-charging As and the Bs. The Bs, though, not sure this catch is going to be made. They really need to, it's going out again actually here. This C category is so motivated. We've seen it last week. They were able to take the win last week with Cordry. They've been right there with the Bs over and over again even when it all comes together here. It's a very strong contingent of riders here. Morgan Kane goes to the front for Norway. Peterson from SCR in the C category. It's going to be Jern as well from Dare Bikes. Charlie NTR. Now he's pulling through. Four watts per kilogram. They're pushing everything they can all they got, C. Ryan here. Charlie Ryan, 162 beats per minute. He's got a solid sprint if he can make it to the line with them. Peterson, 173 beats per minute. 182 with the rider we're looking at here. Ninth place right now, though. Jern, but the... A category, they're starting to catch a few of the Bs that are falling off the pace here. There goes a few B riders now right on through this A category. Look at this. There's the blue kit now coming flying through. It's almost too much. Another one. There goes another one. They're dropping like flies as the B category looks to try and hold off what they can. It's only about 15 seconds up at this point. They're almost within sights. They're right around. There's a bend right here, and B category riders are just dropping like flies as they look to try and put everything they can. Any matches that are left in the book are going to get burned, but will there be any book left at the end of this race? Will they be able to make it across the line on fire, or are they going to burn out? at the end against these A's that are absolutely demolishing the course here. But so, you know, there is something to be said, though. Everybody, you know, we're really hyping up the speed of the A's. They're flying. They may be able to make this do it. A lot of people are predicting it. But there is a reality that each one of these categories in this community-focused race are putting out everything they can because it's based on their functional threshold power, based on what they can do for one hour. And effort feels like effort at a certain rate of perceived exertion, at a certain, this is what my body can handle, it's all the same. And the reality is, is each one of these categories are working as hard as they possibly can to win the race out here. It feels the same between them all if they're all putting out their FTP or above it. But look, there it is, just ahead, just around the corner. The light blue kits and the ride-ons over their heads are just through there. And there's some motivation, obviously, in the A category now because they've got blood in the water. They can taste it. They can see the fade from the B category, bringing them back together. Is it going to be enough, though? The Cs and the Ds still have about, it looks like, half a kilometer, maybe. They've got... 40 seconds there, maybe. Yeah, 40 seconds between them and the B category. It's almost a minute, maybe, between the Cs and the As here at this point. D category still with a little bit under a, a little bit under a minute there between them and the C category. They're making it happen here. Absolutely flying. Keystone, 
pushing a little bit too much here. They're getting some advantage here from a rider that's looking for an upgrade, it looks like. So we'll have to see how that ends up playing out here. Can the A's still make it happen? Only 2.8 kilometers to go. Looks like it's going to be coming right to the line. A category, up and out of the saddle. About to make the catch here. The B category, most likely. Looking behind him there. There's the A's. The catch is going to be made. Where's the C category? They're just around the corner. They're all in this canyon area through the oasis at this point, and the catch is just made. There's the A's. One meter or a couple meters to go. There it is on the back end. Now it's going to be about working together and getting a solid sprint from the B category to catch those that are ahead. There's only about, looking at this D category from what I can see, 2.4 kilometers to go. 2.4 kilometers to go. That's not a lot of landscape to work with with a minute to make up, but they can do it. The speeds, 41 kilometers per hour currently from the D categories. We look at them. Right now, that's what they're hammering away at. They've got two kilometers to go to hold on to this gap. But 35 miles per hour, we're looking at 60 kilometers per hour coming from the A's. A full 20 kilometers per hour faster than these riders. I think if you do the gaps correctly, you do the math, I think the A's are going to make the catch. This is insane. The crazy racing here at this point. And we're seeing from Johnny P saying, must it be C win? We'll see if the C's going to be able to make this happen. I don't know. Good call perhaps here. But look, they're in the distance there behind them. Not sure it's going to be able to make it happen here. Will they even catch this D category? Still the question. It's right to the line still with all of these categories just about to come together in a full on out sprint. You do see the changes there between the leaders there and the A's and the B's at the bottom. They're all together here for these A's and B's now at this point working together. They cannot back off though. It looks like the A's starting to play some games here. Not what we need to be doing here in this A category if they want to make the catch here because they have to push. They have to not care about these blue jerseys amongst them. They have to continue on to make this happen here and bring back the C and the D category. The landscape is running out. There's not going to be enough pavement left if they start looking at each other. 56 seconds over 1.3 kilometers. Go A's if you want to make this happen. C category 35 seconds though is the difference here. C category almost have the D's within their sight. If we look over the shoulder there, there's the pack coming though. And now it's all going to come together. The D category is going to be up to them to hold on to the line with about 1K to go because they're going to be caught the C category. The chop is happening. Now it's going to be about the D's just holding on. They're within a kilometer now, 9 hundred meters here. As it counts down, it looks like the D category, I believe, are going to get their first win here. I'm going to just double check here. I may have that incorrect here, but amongst all of the results here, I believe this is going to be their first, maybe second win on the Lamb Chop series so far. And uh, solid results. All around. It was two to the B's, one to the C's, and one to the A's. So that will be right. This will be their first win outright if they ever to hold on to the line here. 34 seconds. Their catch is being made right now between the C's. There it goes flying right on by. Up and out of the saddle. A sprint is opening up in the A category already. They're in the last kilometer to go with this A's, I believe, here, as they're making their way to the actually 2.2 still to go. And it's L'Oreal here coming from Team Finland here, FCR, looking to try and make that last 30 seconds to come back here. Here's the D category, 264. Quiche now breaking away with the arrow power up well over category limits so we're going to look at Simpson most likely and Jay Jeffrey for the actual win. Oh, Jones now opening up lots of power ups open up here last 200 meters not going to be happening for the A category it's going to be a D category outright win maybe a little bit over the category limits here for some of these riders so we'll give it to them for the broadcast here but perhaps there'll be some changes in the results as we get to the line again it's all about getting the best workout though so Across the line, though, 31 meters to the line here. A category already opening up almost a sprint with 200 meters to go here. 31 meters here we're seeing. Oh, perhaps they still got to go around the corner. As uh, we are seeing, they're still in the cat. They're still in the race here. Keish opened it up here, but I have a feeling perhaps they still got to complete all the way around and come back, perhaps to the actual 
overhead here. I believe there's the the overpass, maybe where they need to go. So gonna have to double check our. Uh, we have a something a little bit up at the graphics there on screen. We'll have to wait and see. But they definitely not ha have not left the uh, group here just yet. Maybe it is a full 37 kilometers that they do need to complete. We, that's what we were saying earlier. There was going to be a full 37 kilometers. I do believe they still have. 2K to go, perhaps, to the line now. We're seeing 862 for the A's here with this main group now at this point, all together now. And it's going to be Jerk said, look at them all just kind of looking at each other. They don't even dare they have no interest at this point, really, to open anything up. They know that they've caught everything that they're going to catch here at this point. Now they're catching the Ds here. So with this little bit of a turnaround, they're going to be heading into the official. I think this is the official sprint section, actually. There it is. It's opening up here at this point. Yep, this is exactly where it's at. It's through the sprint section into the overhead pass, the usual place out on Temple Fugit that you do have a finish line here. And as they come to the line here, 312 meters to go. It was just the D category. Had a little bit of a mix up there with their meters at the top of the screen there, but it's going to be off the dial now. Now 12 watts from cover from VIT. Here he goes. It's going to be off the dial, trying to hold on to it, trying to hold on to it, but it's going to be McGlinchley, I think. McGlinchley across the line out of Ireland, riding for Vitus Pro here, um, I believe. Glinchley killing it here. 12 watts Watts per kilogram and takes it down out of Ireland. Huge result here coming from McGlinchley here. We'll have to wait and see if we do get an update here real quickly. I believe it was McGlinchley. Perhaps, unless there was a breakaway here, I, maybe I called that incorrectly as I'm seeing something a little bit different here. It's off the doll actually gets it across the line here. Maybe McGlinchley not signed up there, but it was off the doll. It looks like nipped it out the line there. Followed up by Martin Rost Omdahl. And then it's going to be Bregan Bergen uh, from the Vikings there. Followed up by Brian Hodges per Johnny Dovin. Then it's going to be James Hodges, Tep Laurie, Kono. And followed up by Walter Fiol. B category. Shout out to the TNC rider. Able to hang on throughout that sprint. I mean, that is quite the sprint that opened up there from that A category. Thomas Clay uh, looks like C. Plusha coming from the Zwift Team Poland e racing there. Solid results there. 44 minutes racing there. Christian Alton off for the A category. A category get their second win in this series for Lamb Chop Racing. This was race number five uh, for the Lamb Chop Racing series that is in partnership with Black Sheep Cycling Apparel out of Australia. If you want to jump in to the racing, you can do a race. Later tonight, if you want to jump into the America's race, it will not be broadcast. But what an amazing job there to the A category all around. This is the results there earlier from, I believe, the women's race here. And it looks like it was Roxanne Timmis across the line for first place in the D category. Sylvia Roman followed up by Alina Klishina. It would be MJ with a solid sprint in that B category. There's Sylvia Groundlin there across the line in fifth place. Then it was Ing Jansen, followed up by C. Scott. Suzanne Bassett from Revo and Natasha Williams in the C category. Shout out to her hanging on after they got caught getting across the line in ninth place. And Sarah Goodyear uh, coming in for 10th. Sorry about that, everybody, with the uh, little bit of mix-up on the uh, at the top of the screen with the last 300 meters for the D category. Uh, but it was the A's. And those predictions that we saw over on YouTube and Facebook, shout out to you guys that were able to predict that with the A category. They were absolutely flying this week. Big shout out to uh, A category and their efforts to close down an 11-minute gap. Absolutely awesome to see. Now, obviously, Lamb Chop Racing, all about the, the the community getting some awesome workout in out there obviously not just about i mean it's a first across lines the motivation but really everybody out there as i said earlier they were all at absolute threshold absolute efforts all about getting a great boost in fitness and uh pushing your pace with your category like a team time trial situation so shout out to everybody that pushed each other out there today great job as ever as always everybody thanks a lot to all the uh all the viewers out there. Uh, next up for broadcast over on ZCL will be the Koa Warrior Race. That'll be at 5 p.m. today, Central Standard Time. Make sure to check that out. And uh, we'll be back for more Lamb Chop Racing next week for race number six. That'll be the final one. So you're looking for that kit and you want to get a good little boost in fitness, make sure, to show up. make sure to show up for the European race next week. The race tonight, maybe EDT time is 7 p.m. for the women's only, 7.45 p.m. for the open race for the Americas. And then next week, we'll have the same thing all over again for the last race. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And as always, ride on.